Hello, and welcome to Prairie Pulse. Coming up a little bit later in the show, we'll profile an artist, S.D. Nelson. But first, our guest, new president of North Dakota State University, Dr. Dean Brashani. Dr. Brashani, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for the opportunity. As we get started today, tell the folks a little bit about yourself and your background. Well, uh, as first-generation college student, no one in my family, and uh, I'm an Italian Catholic, so that's a big family. Uh, no one had ever gone to college or even thought about going to college, and I, my father and, and mother both, I think, assumed that I would follow in their footsteps and uh, be involved with a trucking firm they ran, uh, but at some point I did become interested in, in college, and it had a profound effect on me. It, it really changed my perspective on the world and what I wanted to do in my life. And what I realized uh, through my college education is I wanted to have the same impact and uh, have a role in educating students so that they could experience what I had experienced, a life-changing uh, college uh, career. And I decided at a very young age that I wanted to work in universities for the rest of my life and have been very fortunate in having the opportunity to do that. Well, with that then, how did you become, obviously, the president of North Dakota State uh, University, besides being offered the job? Yeah. Uh, can you talk a little bit about maybe your career path and then how, how what interested you in coming here? Yeah. Well, it, uh, it, it's fairly interesting because I don't think uh, many people as a 20-year-old have the opportunity to, uh, you know, understand what they want to do the rest of their life and really prepare for it and have that all work out. And so I feel very fortunate that my path has been one that a uh, very purposeful and by design, but at the same time very fortuitous in the opportunities that I've had. Uh, you know, I started talking to people about what it takes to be successful leading colleges and universities, uh, studied it, read the books, but also interviewed everyone I could, uh, both formally and informally. And what I found is uh, you can certainly get a lot of insights and a lot of expertise from people you see doing the job well, but you can also learn a lot from the people that you don't see doing the job well. And really being thoughtful about that and then uh, pursuing that career around the country at different types of schools and uh, different locations, literally from the West Coast to the East Coast, the Southern Midwest, the Northern Midwest and really trying to glean everything I could from each of those different environments so that I'd be prepared to be as good of a university president as I could be. And uh, it was interesting. I was teaching a graduate course on university administration one day, and we were talking about different universities. And one young woman in the class uh, who uh, had been a, a graduated from NDSU was actually with the student body vice president when she was there. Uh, kind of cocked her head sideways during class and said, would you ever think of being the president of NDSU? And that's really what got the ball rolling. Oh, really? So, wow, a former student then you told know. you. Well, that's interesting, but yeah. uh, tell us about some of the universities you you worked with. Well, I've had, uh, NDSU is my ninth public university, and mm -hmm. uh, I've uh, been at Humboldt State in California. From there, I went to Bowling Green State in northern Ohio. I uh, went to the University of Wisconsin-Stevens Point after that, uh, University of Minnesota Morris, uh, University of Arizona for my doctorate and worked there for a bit. Uh, moved to the University of Arizona system offices. Uh, from there went to the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill, then Texas A&M University and College Station, and ultimately to NDSU here in beautiful Fargo. Well, then. To talk a little bit about, you, you came from Texas A&M University there where you were Vice President for Student Affairs. Can you talk some about how that position helped prepare you then for this new role? Well, I'm glad you asked uh, because that really is key to, to being prepared for this position. Texas A&M is one of the top 10 public research universities in the nation, student population of about 49,000 students, obviously a dramatically different scale. And the Vice President position there Arguably, I think most people would agree, is the second most visible position on the campus after the president. Uh, have a house on campus uh, and a very high profile role there, working with everything from major fundraising efforts uh, through event management and obviously uh, being involved with managing a football game in Texas at a, at a university of that size is, is a full-time job in itself. And what that provided me the opportunity to do is to test myself and to test myself in one of the most demanding university environments in the nation and to really refine my skills and uh, get ready for a presidency. And I don't know that I would have framed uh, myself as this being the right time, but uh, search consultants 
started coming to me saying, you've got the skills that universities are going to look for uh, as far as both the breadth and depth of experiences uh, that traditionally uh, and increasingly people coming into presidencies perhaps don't offer. Uh, the traditional path is through a purely academic route. And while I've been a faculty member for years now, I've also been in some fairly substantial senior leadership positions. Uh, and the portfolio that I had supervision of at, at Texas A&M, both by personnel and budget, isn't much smaller than what I'm working with here at NDSU as the president. So it really was a, a phenomenal training opportunity and a chance to really refine my skills. Good. Well, talk some then now about the transition. You've been here, uh, been at NDSU for a few months. Talk about the transition and maybe the learning curve. Well, it's, it's uh, been exciting. People often ask me what's been the biggest surprise or challenge. And uh, frankly, what I'm finding is one of the most change-oriented uh, environments I've ever been uh, affiliated with. And the energy and enthusiasm, not just about where NDSU has come in recent years, but where its potentials are, uh, is, is felt across the campus from faculty and staff to students to alumni. Everyone wants to see uh, NDSU be successful, but also sees the potentials for it to contribute more to the state and the residents of North Dakota than it ever has in the past. And that's a pretty exciting opportunity. Well, okay, then talk about what, what it is coming in, and I don't know how much research, obviously I'm sure you did a lot, but what are the, what are the strengths you see at NDSU? Well, North Dakotans in general, I think, uh, offer a culture, a can-do culture. Um, I don't think anyone would look back on the history of North Dakota and say this was an easy place to get things started. Uh, North Dakota has, has a lot of challenges in the geography and uh, the, uh, the success of agriculture, the success of NDSU and UND for that matter, all reflect uh, uh, having a vision for the role that those can have and the successes they can have and uh, taking the attitude that we're going to make this work no matter what. And North Dakotans make things work very, very well. And I think our uh, leadership in agriculture, our emerging leadership in technology and science fields, uh, the success of NDSU over the last decade are all indicative of a can-do attitude that uh, you just don't find everywhere else. Um, and at the same time, as I've mentioned, all I hear from people here is not simply pride over how we do things and our successes, but they talk about how do we do it better? How do we can accomplish more? How do we contribute more to the state? How can NDSU re continue to reposition itself both in North Dakota and on a national and international playing uh, field? Well, now, what are some of the things as uh, you've come in that you feel like the university needs to work on? Well, to tell you the truth, it needs to keep doing what it's doing, which is imagining the unimaginable uh, and, and looking at what its potentials are. You know, the, the old Wayne Gretzky uh, quote, uh, you know, how do you seem to always uh, be where the puck is? And his response was, I, I am always thinking about where the puck's going to be. And the NDSU has a history of, of identifying and imagining the futures of North Dakota and developing the, the research and, and applying that research in ways that make those things possible for North Dakota. We need to continue on that path. In the last 10 years, I think it would have been a, a natural reaction by the university community to look at its accomplishments and sit down and say, wow, we, we've reached it. Uh, I don't hear that on the NDSU campus. Everyone is focused on NDSU being having a bigger role in contributing more to North Dakota than it, than it has in the past. And that's pretty unusual in a university setting, and it's particularly unusual given how far NDSU has come in the last decade. Hmm. Well, speaking of that, can you talk a little bit about the fall enrollment figures and where you are right now? Well, once again, NDSU has experienced another record enrollment. Uh, we're up about 2% this year, which is a bit more modest than in the past, and, and in fact was by design uh, trying to get a, a handle on what's the right size for NDSU and what's the right role for NDSU. Uh, that said, uh, it's clear to me that students and their families are recognizing what an incredible value and what an incredible opportunity NDSU represents. Uh, we have broken into the National Science Foundation's top 100 research ranks and at the same time have remained a very student-focused, land-grant institution that is very proud of its history and, and those traditions. 
Uh, you won't see that around the rest of the country. Usually when research universities start uh, becoming recognized as being top tier research universities, they have a tendency to forget things like land grant missions and they uh, all too often forget about a focus on students. You don't see that the case at NDSU, it's quite the opposite. Uh, our premier researchers down to our students all will refer to NDSU first as a student focused and then we'll talk about the land grant mission and then ultimately they get to the research. And uh, that's an incredible combination in itself and, and quite a compliment to the, the culture of North Dakota State University. But when you look at the relatively modest tuition and fees our students pay versus other similar institutions around the country, that starts being a pretty good package of higher education that we're offering our students. Okay. Well, of course, you're coming in on the heels of Dr. Joseph Chapman, who did a lot of uh, good things in his tenure, but left, I guess, in a bit of a cloud with uh, some issues, and, uh, the uh, uh, overruns of the new president's house being one of those. Uh, can you talk about uh, what you're doing to help restore the credibility with the legislature and the higher board of education? Well, you know, I, I think we're very fortunate that people want to see NDSU be successful, so they're looking for those opportunities. That said, uh, I wanted to make sure and uh, let people know that things were back on that course uh, to achieving what we could. And there's two ways you can do that. You, you can sit at home and uh, wait for people to come talk to you, or you can go out and talk to people. And both talking to people, but also listening to them, I found to be very important. Uh, my first few months in North Dakota, I spent a lot of time on the road visiting people in their hometowns and, and taking advantage of the fact that by meeting them there, I was also sending a message of accessibility and of interest in what their concerns were. But it also gave me a chance to get a feel for the communities that they represent. And I found that invaluable as I, I start getting my arms around North Dakota and the role that North Dakota State should have. Uh, of understanding people in their homes and the challenges and uh, opportunities that they face on a daily basis. Uh, one of my favorite experiences was sitting in the Red Rooster Cafe in Crosby, North Dakota. Uh, when you're at the Red Rooster for breakfast, you have the opportunity to meet everybody in town. Uh, you wouldn't get that opportunity if I waited for people from Crosby to come to Fargo. And that was a, a rich experience that I keep reflecting on in terms of the value of meeting people at their homes and in their places of work. Hmm. That's interesting. Uh, talk about, and you've, you've probably hit on it just a little bit, what's your management style? What do you consider your management style? Well, I believe in empowering the people that work for me to do their jobs and for me representing that work and hearing how we need to do it better. And so accessibility and visibility are very important to me. I'm not a sit in my office kind of guy. I am get out and meet people where they're at, see what's happening around the campus and around the state. and. Uh, making sure that that door is always open, but not the door to my office, uh, the door to wherever I'm at, that people are encouraged to, to walk up to me and share what their, their uh, observations are when we're doing a good job, but more importantly, when we could be doing a better job. And I, and I try to get that message across with everyone I talk to. I'm not here to find compliments. I'm here to find out how we can serve North Dakota better. Well, and with that, I understand uh, you were quite visible during your first uh, few days, especially at school, talking with students. Mm -hmm. You know, how important to you is it that the students know who the president is? Well, I, I think that's critically important. That is our first and, and most important constituency. And what I've found is once you establish that reputation, um, very positive things come from it. If you don't establish that reputation, you spend a lot of time and energy wishing you had. And what I have found uh, is by doing that, students feel comfortable uh, expressing their observations to me very directly. Um, there's pretty rare the day goes by that I don't get a, an email from a student, if not several of them. And uh, most of those are very positive, uh, expressing their excitement and their enthusiasm for NDSU and uh, for the role we play in the state and for being in the Fargo-Moorhead area. But occasionally, it's a student who has a problem or is facing a challenge and they don't know who to turn to. Everyone knows who the president is. So if the president is seen by students as someone that can be of assistance to them and is guiding the university, they know they've always got that one ally. If I don't know who to talk to, if I feel open uh, that the president is open to being contacted, I'll bet that's a person who knows who, I, who could solve my problem. And in fact, we've been very successful with those students who have emailed me or called the office and said, I don't know where to turn. Uh, of finding the person that they uh, need to work through that challenge with. 
and I usually get an email back saying, wow, I didn't think you'd even answer my email, much less solve my problem. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's the sort of culture that NDSU has, has always exhibited and I, I think is a reputation I'd want to continue. Okay. Well, you mentioned keep doing what we're doing, but what are your immediate goals for NDSU? Well, uh, there's no question about it. We need to prove that we deserve the public's trust. And I think we're doing a lot of things to reestablish that and to confirm for them that we're the NDSU that we've always been and we're the NDSU that's going to contribute a lot more to the state's future success. Uh, and again, part of that is simply getting out and talking with people and showing that you're open to criticism and you're open to solving problems and challenges. And uh, that goes a long way, I think, in um, people realizing that there's sincerity behind that. We're not just talking the talk, we're, we're walking the walk. Uh, we also have a fantastic opportunity, but it's also a window of opportunity in terms of the state's economic situation and our competitive advantage we have over many of our uh, nearby as well as national peers around the country. And NDSU can take a dramatically bigger role in the future of the state and, and being part of crafting that future of the state but we're going to have to seize the opportunity right now while the North Dakota's economy is stronger than virtually any place else in the country. Building on our agricultural foundation, but broadening the economic base of the state and being part of, of that taking place. Okay, and, and what about some long-term goals? Have you had enough time to sort of establish some long-term goals, say 5, 10, 15 years down the road? Absolutely, and uh, you know, people usually talk in long terms of, of five and ten. And uh, what I've been finding a lot of success with is saying, "Let's think really big. Let's talk about a hundred years from now." Somebody over a hundred years ago uh, thought about NDSU and had a vision for NDSU that was much bigger than what was taking place uh, in the late 1800s. They imagined the sort of role that we have today. We need to do that for the people of tomorrow. We owe it to the state and the people we serve to be thinking of NDSU and what its role could be a hundred years from now and then backing up to what it is that we want to be accomplishing in five to ten years. NDSU is poised uh, to completely reposition itself in terms of its prestige and productivity compared to the top 100 universities in the nation. We, we've broken into those ranks uh, but we have the capacity to do much, much more. And if we do more, if we do more of the type of research and then the application of that research, again, to diversifying the economy of the state, uh, we'll not only be serving the state better, but we'll start drawing some of the best and brightest faculty minds, some of the best and brightest students, and a lot of resources from outside of North Dakota. And in a sense, bolstering our efforts with, with uh, resources that North Dakotans won't necessarily even have to provide. Okay. Well, and I understand that you've already met with the University of North Dakota President, uh, Dr. Kelly. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk about that relationship and how the two uh, universities coexist? Yeah. Well, I think we're very fortunate in the sense that uh, Dr. Kelly and I had, uh, although we didn't know each other prior to North Dakota, we knew a lot of people who knew a lot of people. And uh, I think on our first meeting, we both looked at each other and said, I've heard a lot about you. <laughs> Uh, and uh, we've been laughing about that ever since. As a matter of fact, we've been told we are not supposed to sit together during meetings because we start having our own meeting. Uh, the reality is that UND and NDSU uh, historically have not had as strong of a relationship as they could, and oftentimes a lot of energy uh, was, I think, uh, unproductively spent trying to compete with each other instead of thinking of us as the state's two flagship research universities. Uh, we're very different universities. Uh, the campus culture, what our academic points of excellence are, uh, what our historic roles have been in the state, uh, both dramatically different, but both can be used to complement each other and, and to increase our effectiveness and ultimately what we give back to the state and what we contribute to the state's success. Uh, Bob Kelly and I speak literally uh, every other day uh, trying to coordinate our efforts better and in a sense row in the same direction. Uh, we don't see the success of our individual institutions as being what our job is about. Our job is to make sure that our universities as, are as productive and contributing to North Dakota's success as they can be. Well, we're just about out of time, but I will ask, what are, what are some of the key priorities NDSU will have going into the new legislative session? 
Well, what we have found, and in, in recently the, the state's higher education roundtable was convened, and uh, several different consultants were brought in, and they gave a consistent message that higher education in North Dakota is, is actually doing a very good job, and in terms of accessibility, affordability, student debt loads, uh, we're one of the best in the nation. But what they pointed out was that the, the two flagship research universities are perhaps uh, underperforming, but they're also underfunded. We can be doing more and we can be contributing more to North Dakota, uh, but we're gonna have to demonstrate that to our legislative representatives. And, uh, and I think they're ready to hear that message and they're ready for their flagship universities to be more successful. Well, right now we're out of time for today, but if people want more information, where's the best place for them to go about NDSU? The university's website knows all, sees all, hears all, uh, ndsu.edu. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Stay tuned for more. Although author S.D. Nelson lived the nomadic life of a military brat, his roots are firmly planted in North Dakota. Both his Native American heritage and his love of the prairie are reflected in the distinctive children's literature that made him read North Dakota's 2010 featured author. All of the books that I've published so far have been Native American children's stories. And for me, uh, those stories uh, come from my heart. I was raised in kind of a nomadic lifestyle as a, uh, an army brat, the child of a military family. But during the summer months, we would take our vacations to North Dakota, where my mother's family was from, on the Standing Rock Reservation. And I always had this connection that my mother had to her roots, to clouds, like clouds you don't see any other place, to earth and sky. By the time I was 13, we had lived in 15 different places. But North Dakota became, in my mind, and still remains, my home. It's interesting, a number of artists are left-handed. I think I've been fascinated with art my whole life. I went to Fargo North High and had art classes there. In fact, it helped me decide to major in art. And I went to Minnesota State University at Moorhead which exposed me to a number of different medias uh, and uh, art concepts. That's when it really became apparent to me that art was a big part of my life. This is a painting that I've started, uh, which is one of the illustrations for an upcoming book. It's a combination of different things that lead an author to write a story and how they write a story. Uh, there are stories that I have written that uh, are inspired by one particular event from my childhood. Then there are stories that are inspired by a charismatic figure whose life and whose work inspires me. I think that Black Elk's Vision is my best book yet. I thoroughly enjoyed writing it, researching it, I, I thoroughly enjoyed illustrating it. Black Elk himself is someone who I find fascinating and I can relate to. I, in particular, identify with his worldview. Black Elk had a vision as a boy that life is a circle and that we all live in this circle. Not just we human beings, we two-legged creatures, but the four-legged creatures, the winged ones, the little creepy crawlies, we all travel in this circle of life. And ultimately, uh, he concludes that if we're gonna travel this road together, let's do it in as harmonious a way as we can. Growing up in many different places as I did, North Dakota still remains at the core of who I am 
and I'm, I'm not sure just really why that is, but there's something uh, about that feeling of being on the prairie. In Lakota, we call the sky our grandfather, Tonkashila, and we call Mother Earth uh, Inamokoche. And those two elements surround and envelop me still. And out on the prairie, you can turn around and see that life is a circle. And that abstract idea, it has given direction to, to my life and specifically to my illustration and my writing. Mark your calendars for this year's Read North Dakota Authors Presentation by S.D. Nelson at the Fargo Theater on Thursday, October the 21st at 7 p.m. Admission is free. Well, that's all we have on Prairie Pulse for this week. And as always, thanks for watching.